Shabbos, good Shabbat morning. Shalom. It's good to be back after a few weeks off of the Bima. It's good to be here to celebrate Shabbos together. It's also good to have power in the building and at home. Hope everyone did okay this week. Let's turn to our Sidorim, to page 103, and we begin our Shabbos morning service with Berchot HaShachar, the blessings of a new day. Page 103, please rise. Baruch atah Adonai Elohim melech haolam Asher natan lasech vibina lehafchin ben yom uvin laila Amen Baruch atah Adonai Elohim melech haolam Shasani b'tzalmo Amen Baruch atah Adonai Elohim melech haolam Shasani b'tchorin Amen Baruch atah Adonai Elohim melech haolam Shasani Yisrael Amen Baruch atah Adonai Elohim melech haolam Pokeach ivrim Amen Baruch atah Adonai Elohim melech haolam Malbish aru Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Elohim melech haolam matir asuri. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Elohim melech haolam zokef kifufi. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Elohim melech haolam roka aret al hamayim. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Elohim melech haolam hamechim mitzadei kave. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Elohim melech haolam shesali kol tvoriki. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Elohim melech haolam ozeir shel bigvur. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Elohim melech haolam ozeir shel betifara. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Elohim melech haolam hanotein leayef koah. Amen. May be seated, middle of page 104. <laughs> Amen. We turn to page 141 from Suke de Zimra, the introductory Psalms at the top of the page. Hallelujah, hallelujah, el bekod show. Hallelujah, el bekod show. Hallelujah, birki auzo. Hallelujah, vigvurota. Hallelujah, kerov gulo. Hallelujah, betek ashofar. Hallelujah, beneve vechinor. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, betof umachol. Hallelujah, b'minim v'yugav. Hallelujah, betzirt leishama. Hallelujah, betzirt leishua. Kol hanshama te halaya. Kol hanshama te halaya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
The soul of all that lives praises your name, Adonai our God, page 145, Nishmat Kochai. Nishmat Kochai, Tibarech Chimcha, Adonai Eloheinu, Nishmat Kochai, Tibarech Chimcha, Adonai Eloheinu, Yaila, 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 Ilu fina malaysia rakaya mos nene urina kaman kala besifto tene kesha va kaja mos nene urina nene mos nene urina misram kalta nene urina 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 Shachar, it begins, page 147. Befi Yesharim Titalal Titalal Udivre Tzadikim Tiparach Tiparach Shokh Let's 
Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator of the universe, who forms light and creates darkness, who brings harmony while creating all. May be seated, page 150. <laughs> Ephes Peter Hagolin, Matamashi, Arve, Indom, Melchamoshi, Nu, Itriata, Meti, page one fifty one, Ella Don. Ella Don, Al Colhamasim, Baro, Humbora, Pefikon, Shama, God of it, two for Maleolam, Tatutuna, Sovimoto. Hamid Kael Chayot HaKodesh V'net Arbechav Al HaMerkava Zechut Umishor Lifne Chiso Chesed Berachamim Lifne Chevodo Tovim Meorot Shebara Eloheinu Yitzaram Bidat Bevina Uv Haskel Oh, Natan Bahem, Lihion Moshlim, Beker of Tevel, Meleim Zip, Umfikim Noga, Na Eziv and Behol Haolam, Semechim Betetam Besasim Bevoam, O Sim Bemaritzon Kornam. Seraphim <laughs> One fifty three. Kulam kecharuni me yomrim beira. Kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. Adonai tevaot. Melo chol aretz kevodo. Fanim chayot hakodesh berash katom inasim numat rafim numatam meshapchim veomrim. Baruch kevod Adonai mimekomo. I am we gather together the corners of the Talit as we prepare to recite the Shema. Barbatan, <laughs> 
ארץ, לעוד הולך היחד חבי אהבה. ברוך אתה אדוני, הבוחר בעמו ישראל בי אהבה. שמע ישראל, אדוני אלוהינו, אדוני את ארוני אלוהיך בכל לבבך ובכל נפשך ובכל מאודיך והיו הדברים האלה אשר אנוכי מצווך היום על לבביך ושיננתם לבניך ודיברת בם בשבטך בביתך ובלכתך בדרך, ובשוכבך ובקומך, וקשרתם להיות הידיך, והיו לתותפות בין עיניך, וכתבתם על מזוזו ביתך, ובישרך בן שוב. אדוני אלוהיכם אמת. לדור ודור וקיים ושמו קיים וחיסו נכון ברטוב ומרטו לעד קיים. ולמי עולמים על אבותי נבל נבל לרטי נבל כל דור ועבודיך על הראשונים ועל האחרונים דבר טוב וכם אומרים וכבים אמר אשר אתה הוא אדוני אלינו ואוהב אבותינו ואימותינו מלך מכין אבותינו ואימותינו ועלינו כל אבותינו ואימותינו יוצרינו שושו אבותינו ובדין מצילין מעם שמך אין אלוהים זולתך עזרת אבותינו ואימותינו אתה הוא מעולם Then Moses, Miriam, and the people of Israel joyfully sang this song to you, Micha Mocha Ba'elim Adonai, middle of page 158. Please rise. <laughs> שיבחו גאונים לשמך השפת הים יחד כולם הודו והמליכו ויאמרו אדוני אם לא Lay all out. 
Tur Israel, Kum Abi Ezra Israel, Ufte Ikhinumecha, Yehuda Be Israel, Go Aleinu, Adonai Tvaot Shemo, Kedosh Israel, Baruch Atah Adonai, we join together page 159 the Shacharit Amidah. El Hagadol Hagibor Behanora El Elyon Gomel Hasadim Tovim Vekone Hakol Vizoher Hasteavot Vimahot Umevi Gohel Ivnevenehem Leman Shemovi Ahava Melech Ozeru Fokeru Moshiau Magain Baruchata Adonai Magin Abraham, Ufoke Tsara, Atagi Borle Ola Maronai, Mechaye Meti Matara Veoshia, Mashi Farua, Humorida Gashem, Mechal Kelchaim Bechesen, Mechaye Meti Berracham Him Rabim, So Mech Noflim Berofe Holim. Umatir asurim, umekayem emunato, lishene afar, bal geburot, umido melach, melach me meet, umekaye, umatmi of Yeshua. the Karazel Zevi Amar Kadosh 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 Adonai Tevaot Melochol Haaretz Kevado Az Bekol Rash Gadol Atir Vechazak Mashbim Kol Minaseim Neumat Serafim Neumat Am Baruch Yomeru Baruch Kevon Adonai Mim Komo Mim Kom Chamakeinu Malkeinu Tofia Vetim Loch Aleinu Ki Mechakim Anachnu Lach Matai Matai Tim Loch Tim Loch Beti Matai matai tim loch, tim loch betion. Bekaro beameinu, bekaro beameinu leolam vahet ishkon. Bekaro beameinu, bekaro beameinu leolam vahet ishkon. Tit kadal vetit kadash, Tit kadal vetit kadash, betoch Yerushalayim, Yerushalayim yercha. Ledor vador, ledor vador, ulenetach nehetachim, ledor vador, ledor. Ve'ineinu 
Continue praying silently. When you've completed your Amida, you may be seated. Hello, hi, Nitor, Lishoni, Mira, Usvatai, Mira, Bear, Mirma, Vilim Kalilai, Nafshi, Tidom, Venafshi, Kafar, La Koti, Hello, hi, Hello, hi, Ihi, Continue on page 167 with Kadish Shalem. Yit kadal vit kadal shemei raba. Amen. Be'al ma'ad ivra chiru te v'em nichmachu te b'chai yichonu v'em ochonu b'chai t'chobay t'israel. Ragalau v'zman kari v'imru. Amen. Yehi shmei raba mevorach. Le'olam lo'am elamayach. Yiparach. Yiparach v'yishabach v'yipar v'yitrma v'yinase v'yitadar v'yitzal v'yitzal al shmei rikudsha. Prichu le'i. Amen. 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 Page 168, please rise for the beginning of the Torah service. In Kamacha, Va Elohim Adonai, Vien Kemasecha, Malchut Echa Malchut, Kol Olamim, Umem Shalut Echa Bechol Dor Vador, Adonai Melech, Adonai, Adonai, 
God, do we put our trust onto God's holy, precious name, do we offer praise. May it be your will that you open our hearts to your Torah and you fulfill the desires of our hearts and the hearts of all your people, Israel, for goodness, for life, and for peace. And let us say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Echad Eloheinu Gadol Show, they shall have a little 
Good Shabbos, good morning, good to see you all. We now turn to our Torah reading. We put aside the Sidurim and we turn to the Chumash, to the Eitz Chaim, to page 357. Our Torah portion this morning is Parashat Va'era, page 357. And the reading from the second triennial portion will begin Shmot chapter 7, verse 8. And Parshat Va'era is the second Torah portion in the book of Shemot, or the book of Exodus, which we began reading last week and tells yeah. over uh, what we think of as the Passover story, as the slavery in Egypt and then the Exodus from Egypt. And as we know from reading this Torah portion, from these Torah portions, from, ce from celebrating Passover, the theme of, of these stories is freedom. Since the end of the book of Breshit, the end of the book of Genesis, the Israelites, who began in Egypt as 70 people, as the family of Joseph, escaping from a famine, have grown into a mighty nation. And at the beginning of last week's Torah portion, we read about a new paro, a new king, who changes his approach to leading the Israelites, to leading his country. And I think that the Pharaoh of the Passover story is a very interesting character to look at when we think about the theme of freedom. Because we often think about our role in the story, the Israelites, the Jewish people. When are we free? When are we slaves? When do uh, our ancestors act like they are truly free? But Pharaoh also presents us with an interesting character to look at. Because what we know about pharaohs in ancient Egypt is that they thought of themselves as gods, as the ultimate rulers of their country and their world, as all-powerful, greater than all of the people, the humans, that they ruled over. Theoretically, a pharaoh has more freedom than anybody else. But at the same time, coming with projecting that idea that the pharaoh is all-powerful, the Pharaoh actually has to come through and take care of the country, take care of the people who he is supposed to lead. And we read about several different Pharaohs over the course of the Israelites' time in Egypt, starting with the Pharaoh who welcomed in Joseph and then later his family. That Pharaoh understood the challenge of his time was a famine, was a drought, was feeding his people. And he turned to Joseph, uh, the wise young man, the wise Hebrew, to help lead the people to guide him. This Pharaoh in the Exodus story takes a very different approach. He sees that his route to power, his route to keeping power, is through fear through fear of people who are a little bit different than the Egyptians. He looks around and he sees the Israelites growing as a people, and he realizes that he can, he can use fear of the Israelites to lead his people. He can make enslaving, oppressing the Israelites, fear of the Jewish people, the central plank of his rule around which all of his people gather and support him. And thus begins the slavery in Egypt. Pharaoh turns our ancestors into slaves who have to work, who have no control over their own lives, who Pharaoh and the Egyptians seek to kill. But then we get to this morning's Torah portion, Parshad Va'era, Moses' confrontation with Pharaoh and the beginning of the plagues. Parshad Va'era contains the first seven of the ten plagues that God will eventually send. And a refrain that we read over and over again in this Parsha is that Pharaoh's heart was hardened against the Israelites, that each time God sends a plague, 
Pharaoh has the option to relent. Each time Moses goes to Pharaoh and says, let my people go, Pharaoh has the option to let them go at that moment, to change direction, uh, to grant freedom to the Israelites. But each one of these times, something happens. No matter how, many t how awful, awfully his people are suffering, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. And it seems to be that God is the one who is hardening Pharaoh's heart. Well, the rabbis of the Talmud and the Midrash were troubled by this idea, the idea that God took away Pharaoh's free choice. Because if Pharaoh had no choice, if God is hardening Pharaoh's heart, if God is causing Pharaoh to enslave the Israelites, why are Pharaoh and his people looked at as the bad guys if they have no choice in this? And the answer that the rabbis of the Talmud give is that they look very closely at the verses and they see that the, after the first five plagues, Pharaoh hardens his own heart. He sets himself against the Jewish people and against Moses. And only after the sixth plague does God start to harden Pharaoh's heart. And they teach something very important about this. They teach us that we are the product of the choices that we make before us, that come before today. That Pharaoh starts out with free will, starts out with the choice to do the right thing. But when he sets himself over and over again on this path to enslave and to oppressing the Israelites, he loses his own ability to stop. He both sets up a country that is reliant on the Israelite slavery, and he sets himself up as a person who refuses to give up. It's too much for his ego, it's too much for his, uh, for his rule to change course and say that I was wrong. So ultimately, by the end of the story, Pharaoh remains enslaved, not to any other Egyptian, but to himself. He's enslaved to the choices he makes to oppress the Israelites. And he reminds us to think about when we make a series of choices. Do we make those choices because those are genuinely the right choice to do? Or do we make those choices because we feel compelled to do or by choices that we made in the past? When is it time to look at our own actions and start to say, I made a wrong choice last time, but I don't have to make that choice over and over again. And the story of Pharaoh serves as a warning that we have a limited number of opportunities to do that. At a certain point, we become too set in our ways and too set on the path that we are doing. So as we read the story of the Exodus from Egypt, we focus not only on what it means for our ancestors to be free from physical slavery and to act like free people, free independent people who, have, uh, who can control their own lives, but also to learn from Pharaoh what it means to look like you have all of the power in the world, the ultimate choice, but to be enslaved to your own actions, to your own poor choices. We begin our Torah reading, page 357, Exodus chapter 7, verse 8. Mary Gordon is our first Torah reader, and we call on Rabbi Rachel Smuckler. I'm Kochem Hayom. Baruch Adonai am Baruch Leolam Vaed. Baruch Adonai am Baruch Leolam Vaed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam. Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Hamim. Venatan Lanu Et Torato. Baruch Ata Adonai Notein HaTorah. Amen. Amen. Bayom er Adonai, el Moshe v'el Aharon lemor, ki yedaber el... Yeah, it just looks like, yeah. Bal yedaber aleichem paro, lemor tenu lachem, mofet... Yamarta el Aharon, Kach et Mate ha Ishlach, Livne Faro ye litani, Vayavo Moshe, Via Haron el Paro, Vaya Suhain, Ka Asher Tsiva Adonai, 
And uh, Rabbi Smuckler is leaving for Israel tomorrow uh, together with our, with our federation on their solidarity mission, uh, you know, where, where I just was. It'll be interesting to compare notes afterwards. And I know that, uh, you know, for, uh, I'm going to talk about my, exper my experience next week. I know I always get excited before I leave for Israel, and I didn't know what to feel really going into this trip. And as I've said to a few people, I can't say it was a good trip, but I found it to be very meaningful and, uh, and, and helpful in understanding the situation there and in feeling uh, love and care and support for, for our Israeli friends and family. And so I'm happy to uh, give you a bracha, a blessing for, uh, for safety and for a successful trip. Uh, together with our local community. Mishaberach, Avotenu, Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Sara, Rivka, Rachel, Vleya, Huyibarech, Et Harav, Rachel, Chana, Bar Aaron, HaKohen, Shealta, Hayom, Lichvot, HaMakom, Lichvot, HaTorah, Lichvot, HaShabbat, Yishmerah, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Ba'alotah, Levakir, Be'eretz Yisrael, V'yatzileha, Mikol Tzara, V'tzuka, Mikol Nega, U'machala, V'yishlach, Bracha, V'aslacha, V'chol Maaseh, Yadeha, V'eretz HaKodesh, Im Kol Yisrael, Acheha, V'nomar, Amen. May God who blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, blessed Rabbi Rachel Smuckler, who has come for an Aliyah with reverence for God and respect for the Torah and Shabbat. May God protect her as she is visiting as she is about to fulfill the mitzvah of visiting Eretz Yisrael, the land and state of Israel. We pray that our and God's blessings be with her as she journeys through the land where our ancestors thrived and where our brothers and sisters continue to thrive as they rebuild and revitalize the Holy Land. May the Kadosh Baruch Hu deliver her from all troubles and distress, bring blessing and success to all her worthy endeavors, together with our fellow Jews everywhere, and let us say, Amen. Amen. Say, go in peace and come back in peace and safe travels, and I hope it is a meaningful and good trip. Call on Jeffrey Gartner for the second Aliyah, page 358, chapter 7, verse 14. Yamud, do you hear your name? Yisrael Moshe Ben Eliyahu. Yisrael Moshe Ben Eliyahu. Halevi. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Le'olam Vayet. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Le'olam Vayet. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam. Asher Baruch Adonai Mikol Hamim. Benatan Lanu Et Torato. Baruch Adonai Noten HaTorah. Amen. Amen. Vayomer Adonai El Moshe. Kaved Lev Paro. Me'en L'Shalach Ha'am. Lev el paro baboker, hine yotze ha maima, denitzav talikrato al svat hayor vehamater, asher nehefach benachash tikach biyadecha, viyamarta elav, hine elohim. The Amarta Elav Adonai Elohei Ha'ifrim Shalach Ni'elecha Le'mor Shalach Et Amin Vayavduni Bamidbar Vehinei 
Continue with the third Aliyah, page 359, verse 19. Kent Rishvarg takes over as Torah reader, and we call on Al Garten. Yamod Avram ben Chaim Shlomo Shlishi. Amen. <laughs> Kachmatcha unete yadecha. Al meme mitzrayim, al naharotam, al yorehem, ve al agamehem, ve al komik ve memehem, ve yudam. Ve hayadam, ve chol eretz mitzrayim, uva etzim, uva avanim. Ve yasuchen, moshe ve haron, kasher tziva adonai. Ve yaren bemate, ve yach et hamayim, asher ba yor, leene var o, uleene avadav. Ve yehavchu, kol hamayim asher ba yor, ledam. Ve hadaga asher ba yor, meta, ve yivash ha yor, lo yachlu mitzrayim, lishtot mayim, min ha yor. Vayi hadam, vayi hadam, b'chol eretz mitzrayim. Vayasu chein chartume mitzrayim, b'latehem. Vayechazak lev par, vayechazak lev paro, v'lo shama alehem, kasher diber Adonai. Vayifen paro, vayavo el beto, v'lo shat libo gam lazot. Vayechapru kol mitzrayim, svivot hayor, Mayim lishtot, ki lo yachlu lishtot mei mei hayaor. Vayim alei shivat yamim, acharei hakot Adonai et hayaor. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam, acher natan lana Torah dameh, v'chayei olam natan pekotenu, baruch atah Adonai noten ha-Torah. Al Yashrikach on your Aliyah, and Al is marking the yurt site of his father, Harold Garden, of blessed memory. And before I recite the Malay for him, would you share something about your father? Sure. Uh, my dad, unlike his father, was hands-on with his kids. Yeah. And uh, he always thought he was a gourmet cook. Of course, the only thing he made hot was scrambled eggs. But... Um, <laughs> you follow in that path on Sunday mornings. <laughs> yeah, that's uh -huh. it. Um, but he would make lunch for uh, my siblings and myself every day for school. Mm -hmm. And um, it was great. We would go to school and unwrap such gourmet meals as cream cheese and olives, cream cheese and jelly. jelly. And his favorite was lettuce and tomato with mayonnaise and white bread. Mm -hmm. And after it sat there in class for three, four hours, 
just, uh, it was fantastic. No. <laughs> Culinary masterpieces. Absolutely. Well, we honor his memory today. I'm going to recite the, the Malay for him. He was Chaim Shlomo ben Yitzchak. El Malay Rachamim Shochahin Mamromi Mametse Minuchanachon Atachat Kanfe Ashrina Bemalo Kiroshim with Horim Kazorakim Azirim and Nishmar Chaim Shlomo ben Yitzchak Shahalach Lola Mo began Eden Day Minuchato Anna Balarachamim Astira Besetra Kanapachalo Lamim with Sir Orbit Rachamim Nishmato Aranayo Nakalato Vianuach Bishalo Mamish Kavo Venomar Amen. His memory should be for a blessing. We continue with the fourth Aliyah, page 360, verse 26. Jennifer Sampson takes over as Torah reader, and we call on Patty Norcom. <laughs> Baruch et Adonai Hamvarach. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Leolam Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Leolam Baed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam. Asher Bachar Banu Mekohamim. Venatan Lanu et Torah To. Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah. Amen. Amen. Vayomer Adonai El Moshe Bo El Paro. The Amar Ta'ela, Ko Amar Adonai, Shalach et Ami, Via Avduni, Ve Ima Enata, Le Shalea, Hine Anohi, No Gave, Et Kol Gavulcha, Batsvardeim, Misharat Taya Or, Svardeim, Ve Alu, Uva Uba Vetaha, Uvahadar mishkavcha ve al mitatecha, uva ve avadecha, uva mecha, uv tanu recha, uv misharotecha, uva cha uvam cha, uva chol avadecha, ya alu hatsvardeim. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher natan lanu Torah emet vechaye olam nata betochenu Baruch ata Adonai noten ha Torah. Amen. Amen. Patty, asher kochech on uh, on your aliyah. So I think it was just last Shavuot that you uh, spoke to us on the bima that you taught us about uh, you know our study together and your approach towards uh, you know choosing a Hebrew name and how to be called to the Torah as someone who converted who chose who chose Judaism. And how to reflect your parents, uh, Lee and Natalie Roche, of blessed memory, uh, in your you know in your name, reflecting their spiritual guidance of you and uh, the pride that you know they feel and they felt in uh, in your spiritual journey. So you know this is the first time since you started using their names uh, to be called to the Torah that you're marking your father's your site. Uh, Lee Roche, of blessed memory, and we hope that he's looking down and, and smiling and, and uh, very proud of you. But uh, I know that when I ask you to share something about your father, I'm going to hear a story about the most interesting man in the world. Yes. <laughs> so would you share something about, uh, about your father? So in the, ongoing, the... in the ongoing saga of the most interesting man in the world, yes. my father was elected to uh, Fulton County Commission back in the 70s and 80s, which is the most populated county in the Atlanta area. And one of the, his fellow county commissioners was Martin Luther King III. And so I had an opportunity to get to uh, meet uh, Mr. King, um, and uh, my children actually got a chance to meet with him, and uh, my dad had a Super 8 video camera and took a video uh, of my kids asking him questions, and uh, Mr. King took us on a tour around um, the, um, uh, in Atlanta, in the area where his, his parents grew up. And um, so I think it's something of a coincidence uh, after getting to know uh, Martin Luther King III that my father's yard site is on his father's birthday. So, um, but I, I just feel uh, a special connection to uh, Martin Luther King's family at this time of year, uh, not just for the wonderful work that uh, both Martin Luther King Jr. and his wife Coretta 
who in her own right uh, was quite an activist, uh, but just the connection that my family had with their family, uh, not, not a close connection, but a connection nonetheless that I do cherish. That is beautiful, and as you say, it's really one of those fitting ways that it works out, that his yard site is on, uh, is on Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, and so you honor that every year. So I'm gonna recite the Malay for your father. El Malay Rachamim Shochein Mamromim Mamitse Minuchanachona Tachat Kanfe Ashkina Bemalo Kirahoshim Utahorim Kizarakim Azirim Et Nishmat Hamachuna Li Roch Shahalach Le Olamo Began Eden Day Minuchato Anna Bala Rachamim Asira Beseta Ganefechalola Mimutse Rohoris Racham Nishmato Adonai Unachalato Vianuach Beshalo Mamishkavo Venomar Amen. His memory should always be for a blessing. Jennifer, Jennifer Samson, didn't get to acknowledge you, you ran off the beam, but that was your first time reading Torah. A big yashver kochech to Jennifer for reading for the first time. We hope it is the first of, uh, of many times reading. And yashver kochech, and thank you. We continue with the fifth aliyah, page 361. Call on our visitor, rabbinical student Josh Bender. Yamod Yoshua. Eliyahu ben Kadesh Vilea. Oh, Eliyahu ben Kadesh Vilea. Chamishi. Second name of non-obvious Hebrew names. <laughs> Named after my great grandmother. Fun fact. Baruch Atah Adonai Mvorach Baruch Atah Adonai Mvorach Baruch Atah Adonai Mvorach Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Menuch Alam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Hamim Vinatan Lanu Et Torato Baruch Atah Adonai Notein HaTorah Amen Amen Vayomer Adonai Om Moshe Emor El Aharon Nete Et Matcha Vet Hach Et Ha 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 no, that's it. No, that's Al Naharotaham, Al Yorehem, Vial Agmehem, Vial Komik Ve Memehem, Vayu, Dam, Vahaya, Dam, Bahol Eretz Mitzrayim, Uva Etzim, Uva Avanim, Vaya Suchain Moshe Viaharon, Kasher Tiva Adonai, Vayarem Bamate, Vayach Etamayim, Asher Bayor, Lene Faro, Ulene Avadab. Vayehafu Kohamayam Asher Bayor Ledam Vahadaga Asher Bayor Meta Vayiv Ash Hayor Vloyachlu Mitzrayim Lishtot Meme Mayim Min Hayor Vayi Hadam Bachol Eretz Mitzrayim Vayasuchain Hartume Mitzrayim Balatehem Vayechazak Lev Paro Vlo Shama Alehem kasher diber Adonai. Vayifen paro, vayavo el beto, velo shat libo gam lazot. Vayach peru ko mitzrayim, svivot hayor, mayim lishtot, ki lo yachlu lishtot mimei hayor. Vaymale shivat yamim, achare hakot Adonai et hayor. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech alam, asher natan lanu Torah temet, dechai olam nata betochenu, Baruch atah Adonai notein atorah. Amen. Now, shukach to Josh. I want to welcome Josh Bender, who's joining us uh, from New York City, from Manhattan. I'm going to introduce him more fully later, but Josh is a fifth-year student at the Jewish Theological Seminary in the Rabbinical School. Fifth year means that he is in his very last semester of Rabbinical School. You are almost there. 
you get one letter for each year of rabbinical school, R-A-B-B-I, so you're, you're almost done. And uh, you know, it's, it's been a pleasure comparing notes and uh, making me feel very old as all my teachers are retired. And, uh, and JTS, JTS has changed a lot, but it's been a pleasure to have you here and we look forward to, uh, to learning from you in a, in a few moments. But I will uh, share, I liked hearing you told me about, you know, five years is a long time to be in school. A uh, long time to be in, be in graduate school. And at the end, part of the ordination when you become a rabbi is that you, know, you stand up uh, in front of a Beit Din, in front of a court of rabbis with a rabbinic mentor. And that mentor gives you a blessing, gives you a bracha, and presents you with the, uh, the JTS talis, the most expensive talis you will ever own. Five years of graduate school tuition. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, you told me that you had the other day where they brought in the samples and your classmates got to, got to pick them out. And I hope that's kind of a fun moment. And you're able to enjoy uh, that, last semester of, uh, that last semester of school because it's a really special time of learning uh, from your classmates and from your teachers and from your mentors. But uh, good to have you with us in Charlotte this Shabbat. Thank Asher you. Koach. We continue with the sixth Aliyah, page 361. Call on Tamara Norman, and Marcy Thaler takes over as our Torah reader. Ta'amu Tamar Bat. Tamar Bat Yitzhak Barachel. Yitzhak Barachel Shishi. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamvarach. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Leolam Ba'ed. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Leolam Ba'ed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam. Asher Bach Rabbanu Mikal Ha'amim. V'natan Lanu et Tarato. Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah. Amen. Amen. Misaru HaTvarnim. Mimcha Ma'avet. O may Bahatecha, O may Avadecha, O may Amecha, Rahat by a war, Tish Arna, my it say, Moshe, Haron, may him paro, it's a Moshe, Eladonai, Aldevar, may he. Wait. Oh, the bar had for him, I shall sham the far woe. Why, yes, by its root, Ham, Hamon, Hamarim, Hamarim, but if Ash Haaretz, by my heart, Paro, Kihi Haita, Har, Harvaha, the Achmed, Etni, Paro, the Losh, Hamaha, Alehem, Kaasher, the Beradon. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu Torah temet, v'chaye olam natah betochenu, baruch atah Adonai, noten ha-Torah. Amen. Amen. We continue with the seventh Aliyah, page 362, verse 12. We call on Julio Flores. Ya'amo, do you Hebrew name? Chaim ben Yitan Shishi. Baruch et Adonai HaMeborach. Baruch Adonai HaMeborach Leolam Ba'ed. Baruch Adonai HaMeborach Leolam Ba'ed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol HaAmin Benatan Lanu Torato Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTora. Amin. Let 
Mitzrayim, Vayasuchin, Vayet Aaron, Et Yadoho, Vimateho, Vayah, Et Aparet, Vat he hakin him, Beadam of Hakima, Kalafar Haret, Hayah hakin him, Behold her at me try him, Bea Asuhin. A her to me him, Bilate him, Luti, Et hakin him, Velo, Yaholu. But he hakin him be Adam of Abhema. I am rue, a heart to me him el paro, et ba Elohim he he he. My ear is not a clipper woe, below Shama, only him, Kasher di Peradonai. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher natan lanu et torato torat emet bechaye olam natan betochenu Baruch ata Adonai noten chatora. Amen. Yashar koach Julio. We pause for a moment as we conclude the seven aliyot from the Torah to turn to the Mishaberach prayer for healing as we think of those in our lives in need of physical and spiritual well-being. This Shabbat we call to mind our friends and family and we include among them Shimon ben Yaakov, Mordechai ben Naomi, Peral bat Rezel, Malka bat Sara, Liza Mira bat Leah, Kathy Berlin, Miriam bat Rivka, Dennis Carroll, Mordechai Chaim ben Leah, Malka Sara bat Rubin Veru, Tehazan Ari Shimon ben Chana, Sophie Galinsky, Maxine Albaum, Mitchell Radden, Julie Duke, Talia Weinstein, Moshe Alchanan ben Arab, Avram Yosef Alevi, Kevin Haffey, David Graff, Blue Maduva, Ital Chaya, Hershel Yoshua ben Malka, David Shmuel ben Chava, Moshe ben Zeb, Chanan ben Lazer, Shnuer Zalman ben Chanan Mindel, Malka bat Simcha Eliyahu v'Sara Devora, Shoshana bat Esther, Thomas Clark, Tchia bat Rachel, Miriam bat Nechama, Beverly Leibowitz, Yehuda Mason, David Shmuel ben Chava, Devora bat Genendel, Terry and Al Bradley, Yaakov Burton, Masha Sima bat Chaya Dina, Esther Batya bat Liba Tzivya, Maxine Stein, Yaakov ben Moshe, Noam ben Rivka Leah, Alana Chaya bat Menachem Yaakov, Moshe ben Tzaitel, Yafa Fega bat Tisselbina, Rafael ben David, Shana Leah, Leah Rachel, Avery Yitzchak ben Svi, Sarah Gittel bat Marsha. If you'd like to include someone in the prayer for healing, I invite you to rise and to share their names when I come to you. Regina.
Bet Kol HaCholim and all those who are ill, we join together the Mishverach prayer for healing. Let's join our voices together. May the source of strength who bless the ones before us help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing and let us say Amen. Bless those in need of healing with refua shlema, the renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let us say Amen. Please rise. It kadabi it kadashime raba. Amen. Yamadi brahiru te biam ni pahute. Becha ye konu yo me kon. Ufrai ye te kol bit israel. Bagala bagala. Uvis man kari bi meru. Amen. Ye heishme raba bevora. Le ala mula me ala maya. It bara i bara. Amen. You may be seated. We turn ahead to the Maftir Aliyah, page 367, Shmot chapter 9. Verse 33, and we call on Cantor Elias Rushfarg. Yamon Hachazan Eliyahu, Ben Michal the Adam of Tear. Baruch Adonai Hamaburach, Leolam, Amen. Yashakach, Marcy, Yashakach, Kenta Rushvarg. Please rise for Hagba and Galila. Call on Jonathan and Tess Berger. Yamod Hamagbi Av Hagolalet Yamdu. Bezo Tatara Shesam Moshe Leafne Bene Israel Api Adonai Be. Moshe, 
The Haftarah for Parshat Vayera is on page 370 from the prophet Yechezkel, Ezekiel, beginning chapter 28, verse 25. Torah portion in Vayera deals with the confrontation between Moses and Egypt. And in the Haftarah, Yechezkel prophecies against a later Pharaoh and a later Egypt that remains a neighbor of ancient Israel. You may be seated. Kanta Rushvarg chants the Haftarah, page 370. Im Otam, Miss Vivotam, Veyadeu, Ki Ani Adonai, Elohehem. Bashana ha asirit, ba asiri, Bishne asar la hachodesh, Hayad varadonai, Elai lemor. Ben Adam, Sim panecha al paro melech mitzrayim, Vihinave alav, Vea mitzrayim, Kula, Kula. Da berva marta ko amar Adonai Elohim hinini alecha par o melech mitzrayim hatanim hagadol harovets betoch yoorav asher amar li yoorav ani asitini venati venatati hach hachim bilcha yecha. Vihidbakti de gat yo oreha be kaske so teha, ve ha ali tiha mi toh yo oreha, ve et kol de gat yo oreha, be kaske so teha tidbak. Unitash tiha hamibara, otha ve et kol de gat yo oreha, apne hasadeti pol, lo te asef ve lo tikavets. Lechayat ha'aretz ulo'ov ha'shamayim netatich al'ochlah v'yadu kol yoshvei mitzrayim ki ani Adonai yan heyotam mishenet kanel veit Yisrael betovsam becha bakaf terot uvakata lahem kol katev uvihish anam. Betov sam becha bakav teirot uvakatalahem kol katev vihish ana malecha tishaver vhamadetalahem kol motnaim lachen ko amar Adonai Elohim hineni mevi alayich charev vikrati mimech adam uvehema. Vaita Eretz Mitzrayim lishmama vechorva v'yadu ki ani Adonai yan amar yor liv ani asiti lachen hinini elcha ve'el yorecha v'natati et Eretz Mitzrayim lechorvot chorev shmama mimigdol zvenev ad gvul kush. Lo tavor ba regel adam v'regel behema lo tavor ba v'lo teshev arba'im shana v'natati et eretz mitzrayim shmama betoch arzot nishamot v'areha betoch arim mechoravot tiena shmama arba'im shana. Vahafitzoti et Mitzrayim bagoyim vzeritim baaratzot ki ko amar Adonai Elohim miketz arba'im shana akabetz et Mitzrayim min haamim asher nafotsu shama veshati et shvut Mitzrayim 
Vahashivoti otam Eretz patros Al Eretz mehuratam Vayusham mamlacha shvala Min hamamlachot tiye shvala Velo titnase od al hagoyim Vahimatetim levilti redot bagoyim Velo Ye od the Vet Israel Miftah Maskir Avon Buf Notam Acharehem Vyad U Kiani Adonai Elohim Baru Hatadonai Elohenu Melachaulam Surko Haulamim Sadik Bechola Dorot Ha'el ha'ne'eman ha'omer ve'oseh ha'mdaberum kayem she'kol d'mara ve'met v'atzedek. Ne'eman atahu Adonai Eloheinu ve'ne'emanim d'varecha ve'davar echad mitvarecha achor lo yashuv rekam ki ha'melech ne'eman v'rachaman ata baruch ata Adonai ha'el ha'ne'eman v'chol d'vara Amen Racheim al Zion ki hi beit chayenu Velaluvat nefesh toshia bimerav yamenu baruch ata Adonai. Mesameach Zion bevaneha. Amen. Samcheinu Adonai Eloheinu beEliyahu Hanavi avdecha uvmachut beit David meshichecha bimerayavo viagel libenu al kis olo yeshev zar velo yinchalu orachemrim et kvodo ki v'shem kod shechan nishpat halo shelo yich benei rol yolam va'ed baruch ata Adonai magen David Amen al haTorah v'al haVodah v'al hanviim v'al yom haShabbat hazeh shenatat alanu Adonai Eloheinu likdushav limnucha lechavod ultif aret al hakol Adonai Eloheinu anach nmodim lach umvarkim otach. Yit barach shimcha befi kol chai, tamid leolam va'ed, baruch ata Adonai. Mekadesh ha-shabbat. Amen. Yashikach Kanta Roshvarg. Let's turn back to the Sidurim to page 177. Now next week I'm going to speak about uh, some of the more serious reflections on my time in Israel, but as we... Uh, about to prepare, are about to pray for our country and then for the state of Israel, I'll share uh, a lighter hearted story. One of the real highlights was a meeting in Beit Hanasi in the president's house with President Isaac Yitzchak Herzog, uh, the president of the state of Israel. And as you probably know, the president in Israel is a ceremonial position as opposed to the prime minister who's the government leader of the country. And the president plays a very, or is supposed to play, a very unifying role. Israeli politics are pretty cutthroat, pretty ugly, and the president is supposed to be a national figure, a national comforter, a national cheerleader, uh, regardless of party affiliation. And the president is also supposed to look out for the relationship between the state of Israel and Jewish people uh, across the world. And Isaac Herzog is, uh, comes from a family of what might be called Zionist royalty. His grandfather, uh, also Isaac Yitzchak Herzog, was one of the early Ashkenazi chief rabbis of the state of Israel, and uh, is credited with writing the prayer for the state of Israel, which is used in, uh, in our community and in communities across the world. His father, Chaim Herzog, served also as the president of the state of Israel, and, uh, and as Israel's ambassador to the United Nations. And uh, there's a very famous scene of his father, Chaim Herzog, which you can find on YouTube, standing at the podium in the UN, where he gives a speech about the Zionism is racism resolution, and then uh, dramatically tears up the resolution uh, in, front of the, in front of the United Nations. So Isaac Herzog, the current president, was a politician. He led the Labor Party. Not so successfully, but he's been a very uh, he was he's been a very popular president because he transitioned in that role from being a politician to being uh, a national unifier who speaks on behalf of the country. Well, I got a quick lesson in humility when uh, we went in for the pres to meet the president because I was the first person to arrive from the from the delegation of rabbis, and they show me into the meeting room, and it's in the front there are two chairs on a dais. 
uh, facing each other. One is for the president and one is for the leader of the delegation. And then there are chairs arranged on either side. And I was the first person there. And so I assumed I would uh, show a little bit of ego and decided to sit right next to the president so that I would be in all the pictures. And uh, that was my thought anyway. But then, a few minutes later, the president's assistant comes in and uh, promptly walks up to me and says, uh, Kavod Harav, you know, Rabbi, this is where the president's executive, direct, uh, executive assistant sits. You can sit back there. <laughs> and I got the last seat in the room. But what was uh, very touching about the, about the meeting was that uh, Rabbi Stuart Weinblatt, who led the delegation, started with a prepared talk about uh, you know, the communities that, that we come from and the care and support that we all have for Israel at this time. And President Herzog immediately turned around the conversation and went around the room and asked every single rabbi there, and rabbis can talk, uh, to tell him about their community and about the, you know, the situation that Jews might be facing in different American communities. And the rabbis were from, uh, from across the United States. And it was interesting to hear about everything and then to share a little bit about uh, Temple Israel and the Charlotte Jewish community and some of the challenges that we've had with anti-Semitism here uh, with the president of the state of Israel. But being very touched that at, at that moment when we came to express our support, our solidarity, our caring, he was interested in hearing about us and our Jewish communities. And it's uh, you know, the feeling that I hope we can constantly cultivate between American Jewish communities and Jewish communities across the world, but especially uh, in the state of Israel. Let's turn to page 177. In the middle of the page, we rise and we join together in a prayer for our country, the United States of America. Our God and God of our ancestors, with mercy accept our prayer on behalf of our country and its government. Pour out your blessing upon this land, upon its inhabitants, upon its leaders, its judges, officers, and officials who faithfully devote themselves to the needs of the public. Help them understand the rules of justice you have decreed so that peace and security, happiness and freedom will never depart from our land. Adonai, God, whose spirit is in all creatures, we pray that your spirit be awakened within all the inhabitants of our land. Uproot from our hearts hatred and malice, jealousy and strife. Plant love and companionship, peace and friendship among the many peoples and faiths who dwell in our nation. Grant us the knowledge to judge justly, the wisdom to act with compassion, and the understanding and courage to root out poverty from our land. May it be your will that our land be a blessing to all who dwell on earth, and may you cause all peoples to dwell in friendship and freedom. Speedily fulfill the vision of your prophets. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. For all of them, from the least of them to the greatest, shall know me, Amen. and let us say, Amen. Amen. Page 178. <coughs> we join together the prayer for the state of Israel. As part of praying for the state of Israel, we pray for those who protect it through their service to Sahal, the IDF, or the police forces, <coughs> or the various agencies that support the state of Israel. And when we completed our visit to the president, we followed him outside to the garden where he welcomed a battalion that had just come back from Gaza uh, from, from fighting in the war. And what was so striking and hard to see about that was just how young the soldiers were, soldiers who were probably 18 years old when they were sent into Gaza, who a few weeks ago were uh, you know, were, were students or were uh, just serving their time, not realizing that they were about to be sent into a war zone and a reminder of uh, the effects of this war on regular Israelis, even if they didn't uh, suffer losses on October 7th, how their lives will permanently be affected by their service to the country. We pray on their behalf and on behalf of the state of Israel, page 178. Avinu, Avinu, Sheba Shamaim, Sur Israel Vego Alo. Avinu, Avinu, Sheba Shamaim, Sur Israel Vego Alo. Barech, Medina Israel, Shetehir, Shitz Michat Gulatenu. Hagen aleha bevrat chastecha, ufros aleha sukat shlomecha, ushlach orcha vamircha lerasheha sareha bioatseha, betaknem beitsa tova milfanecha, 
Chazek et Yedei Meginei Eretz Koshenu, Vanchilem Eloheinu Yeshua, Vateret Nitzachon Te Atreim, Venatata Shalom Ba'aretz, Vesimchat Olam Liyoshveha, Venomar Amen. May be seated. Cantor leads us in the Ashrei, page 181. Page 183, we rise for the conclusion of the Torah service. Yeah, hallelujah, Shem Adonai, ki nizkav shemo levado, hodo al eretz v'shamayim, v'yarem keret li'amo tehila lechol chasidav livne Yisrael. Am Kerovo, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Mis Morne David, Avul Adonai Benenim, Avul Adonai Kavod Vaos, Avul Adonai Kivod Shemo Hishtach, Avul Adonai Behad Rad Kodesh, Coronel Maim la Cavod Hiri, Maronai la Maim Ramim, Colantonai Bacoach, Colantonai Behadar, Colantonai Shover Arazim, Vaishaber Adonai Etarze Halvanon, Vayar Kidim Kavoega Levanon, Vesirion, Kemo Venereim. Call Adonai, God save the votes. Call Adonai, Yachil Midbar. Yachil Adonai, Midbar Kadesh. Call Adonai, Yachol Elayalot. Vayach Esof Yarot, Vehechano, Kulo Merkavon. Adonai, Lamabul, Yashav Vayishav Adonai. Melech le'olam, Adonai, oz le'amo yitin, Adonai yevarech et amo v'shalom. Uvnuchoi yomar. Yitzchayim hi. La machazikim ba v'tomecheha meushar derecheha darcheinu am v'chonitivoteha shalom ashi.
seated. Yasha Koch, to Len Berkowitz, and Jeffrey Gartner for serving as the Gabais this morning. Good Shabbos, everyone. Good morning. So as I've spoken about before, I studied at the Jewish Theological Seminary myself for a total of nine years. Four years as an undergraduate uh, in the List College joint program between JTS and Columbia University and uh, then for five years as a rabbinical student, which rabbinical school is a graduate program. Uh, you finish rabbinical school with ordination as a rabbi and, a, uh, and an additional master's degree. It's a lot of school for a master's. And JTS includes within it five different schools. The rabbinical school and undergraduate, as I mentioned, the cantorial school, the Davidson School of Education and the Graduate School, which, which trains academic scholars of different areas of Jewish study. And JTS has been teaching American Jews since the 1880s, and it's gone through uh, many transformations since then, and uh, continues to teach professional and lay Jews uh, who influence, who lead, who are active parts of the Jewish community all across America and all across the world as well. And one of, J one of the things JTS uh, does is send students, mostly rabbinical and cantorial students, to visit communities uh, in different parts of the country as part of their student ambassador program, a chance for students to see other communities and uh, for us to see JTS uh, students. And so this Shabbat, I'm very happy to welcome Joshua Bender. Josh is a fifth year rabbinical student, as I said before, meaning he's in his final year uh, of study before he's ordained as a rabbi, uh, which means he's uh, in the middle of what we call placement or looking for a job, looking, figuring out where he's going to serve as a rabbi after graduation. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about Josh, who's going to share some words of Torah with us. He's a fifth year rabbinical student at JTS. He is also pursuing a master's degree in Jewish law and serves as a fellow with the Committee on Jewish Law and Standards, which I think must be a very interesting job. The CJLS uh, advises rabbis in the conservative movement about questions of Jewish law. He also serves this year as the rabbinic intern at NYU uh, at the Bronfman Center for Jewish Student Life. He is originally from Ann Arbor, Michigan, and in his free time, he likes to go to stand-up comedy shows and to cook Middle Eastern food. So he's very funny. Does that work? And uh, Josh, come on up if you join me on the, join me on the Bima up here. I know you're going to talk a little bit about uh, your time at JTS, but before you uh, get started with your Dvar Torah, could you share something that's been really you know, meaningful about your time studying at JTS? I know it's a special experience. Yeah, I would, I would say what's been really profound is just the way in which it's transformed how I think and how I feel and how I live day to day. Um, my professors aren't just particular, uh, especially intelligent and knowledgeable people, they're also very kind people and learning how to weave together being, being a mensch, being a good person, with also uh, developing a real love for the study of Jewish text and seeing the rich world in which they emerge from and all its nuance and all the beautiful and nuanced ways in which they can exist and, and inform and enrich our world today. So Josh is going to share some words of Torah uh, and now, and then uh, after Kiddush, he's going to teach us in a uh, shiur, if you'd like to join us for that. And I advise you, during Kiddush, feel free to go up to him, schmooze, him, schmooze with him, tell him all the things that you like that rabbis do and all the things that you absolutely hate that rabbis do, because that's important education too. <laughs> Josh, happy to turn the bima over to you. Thank you. So... The editing of the parshiot of the of last week's parsha, where it ends and where this week's parsha begins, is a bit odd. Uh, if we look at the end of last week's parsha, Moses has his encounter with God at the burning bush. He begins advocating for the Jewish people on their behalf to Pharaoh, uh, and it is not going so well. Uh, in fact, things are getting worse. Uh, the uh, Pharaoh's response is to double the amount of bricks that the Israelites must produce. And Moses goes back to God and uh, says, you know, that things are not going well, what am I to do, and so forth. And God reassures Moses uh, in a manner similar to as, as God has done for previous prophets. So far, everything's very par for the forest. 
But then the last week's parsha ends mid-conversation, which is odd if you think about the structure of a, of a typical book. Most authors, most editors would not end a chapter in a novel in the middle of a conversation between two characters and then pick it up in the next chapter, which is what the Torah does here. And I believe it does so because of what happens next. Uh, God uses God's uh, true name. Now, when I was preparing this, and I looked at the rabbinic commentaries on, on this week's Parsha and Vayera. There's this recurring uh, teaching that this is the revelation of God's true name. And when I was looking through the Chumash uh, this morning, the Red Eitz Chaim Chumash that you all have, uh, it doesn't say that. It's really interesting, and it, it changed my thinking on this, and it's going to change the Devar I get a bit. So on page 352, which I'm going to go through this, so you, if you have it open in front of you, you're welcome to look at it. If not, I'm going to read it, so it's fine. But um, it, it counters that statement that this is a, a revelation from God of God's true name. And in fact, if you look as early as, as Genesis, God's, God's four-letter name, the one that appears up there, um, is, has been used and re referenced. What's different is that in, in these conversations between the prophets preceding Moses and God, they use sort of a more euphemistic nickname. Uh, and, that's, and that's what gets said in the opening of this week's parsha that I appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as El Shaddai, but I did not make myself known to them by name. So this, this name El Shaddai, it is, uh, it is a root, Shin Dalit Yud, which, which means uh, from the root, like that root would appear as a protector or sustainer, referencing nursing like you would do for an infant, uh, Shaddai, or also like stronghold, like fortress, that same root. And, and so in that sense, the preceding pro generations of prophets, they've been knowing God on, on, on their own terms, on how they experience God. They've been getting to know God, interacting with God as protector and sustainer, the one who protects them and feeds them. But Moses is getting to know God on God's terms. And that's why there's this big, I think there's this, this gap in the conversation between last week's parsha and this parsha is to emphasize in the editorial presentation of the Torah that this is a big moment, a transitory moment. And I think that's why preceding generations of rabbis have often said, like, this is the revelation of the name. But it's, it's different in the sense, and it says this on page 352, where it says, uh, it is similar in to, it is, it, is a similar, it is similar to form, to a widespread form in ancient Semitic royal inscriptions as a self-identification presentation formula, such as, I am Shal Manasseh, I am Mesha, I am Eschardam. If you think about it, when the president of the United States, uh, Judaism often uses the metaphor of like a human ruler to help us better understand God. Hail to the Chief plays. It's a formal introduction. Uh, if anybody's seen uh, the Daniel Day-Lewis Abraham Lincoln movie, there's this famous scene when he's defending the Emancipation Proclamation to his cabinet, and he pounds his fist and he goes, I am the President of the United States clothed in immense power. And it's this really wonderful dramatic moment. And um, putting it in human terms, obviously God is not, not human, is not a king, uh, but we understand and relate to God in human terms. Um, God is saying, I am God. Moses is saying, you know, things are not going well. You've assigned me this task. How am I ever going to do it? And, and God is going, I am God, and you will liberate the Jewish people. Um, and and it, it differs in my original when I was reading through it, when I was reading the rabbinic commentaries. You think of it as this revelatory moment of the name, but really what it is is a, a revelation of an evolution in the relationship between God and the Jewish people. We're evolving in our ability and our degree to which we can understand God. We aren't just now going to understand God on, on our own terms as a mother or a military. We're going to grow in our understanding and our ability to understand God on a deeper level, on God's terms. So in this, in this interaction, God notes the patriarch as an allusion to this process. You know, he says, I am the God of, of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, God could have given uh, Abraham and Sarah a son decades before Isaac was finally born. God could have promised them that Isaac's descendants would all be wealthy and comfortable, instead of promising them that they would all be enslaved. It is part of this continual process of, of obstacle and evolution and relationship. We're the product of our experiences, of our experiences both good and bad, and that is what the Jewish people have been experiencing, good and bad, 
obstacles and blessings, and they're developed, they've learned and developed further in the relationship with God up to this point to where they can finally experience God on God's terms. And we have to believe in that process of obstacle and of learning through obstacle, of experiencing good and bad, growing and developing further from it, because we have to believe in a world that has meaning. I think about how both how challenging and also how beautiful my experience of rabbinical school has been, the incredible things I've learned, the different places I've gotten to go, the people I've met. And it's been both beautiful and very challenging, moving around, being far away from home, trying to do rabbinical school during a global pandemic. And I have to believe all of it means something because the experience of the Jewish people, the reason that I'm in rabbinical school is to be of service to the Jewish people, learning how to better do that. I have to think all of that means something. It can't be a product of random chance. Um, the rabbinical school, what I've learned, the way it weaves in with my experiences, intersects with who I am to the depths of my soul. And the theology that inspired that is inspired by the story of the Jewish people, the obstacles and the experiences we've had. Rabbinic theology makes sense of those obstacles, of that journey, of the trajectory of the Jewish people in our story, through what we bring to the table as a result of that, what we learn and the knowledge we're able to share. In the Talmud and throughout rabbinic literature, there's this notion of, a, of the, there's the moment when Adam is created in the image of God, and then there's a progressive decline in humanity, a lessening of that image in each generation. One of my professors compared it to sort of like a, a Xerox copy machine. Adam is the original copy. Uh, the you term the Talmud uses, I think, is I iconos, or uh, icon. Um, he's the original copy. And uh, with each generation, it's like a new copy. If you think about when you copy a copy a copy, each time the image gets a little more corrupted, a little looks a little bit less like the original image from which it was copied. But we're not talking about, when the rabbis talk about this progressive decline, the loss of, of, of semblance to God, they're not talking about a physical semblance. That's one of the things I think that this parsha highlights is the vanity of, of reliance on physical semblance, physical images, physical force, compared to spiritual force, spiritual power. The seeming strength of the material, but its weakness to immaterial forces, to God. We're talking about, when we talk about this decline, we're talking about a decline in our understanding of God, our intellectual and spiritual intimacy with God, the degree to which we really know God on God's terms. We're speaking about the decline from monotheism, a belief and an awareness of the singular and unified nature of God, into idolatrous polytheism, as practiced by the Egyptians and the larger non-Jewish world at the time of the Israelites which is the worship of division and materialism. To be in the image of God, then, is to know that God is one and all of creation emanates from God in an essential unity, which is a bit of a lofty and confusing concept, I think, anyway. So one small example of this, I would say, is if we look at rainfall. Rain falls from the sky. It's evaporated, from sun, it's evaporated by sunlight and then it returns to the sky as water vapor and then falls again as rain. And we look at that process and we don't go, oh, well, there must be a God of rain, a God of clouds, a God of sun, a God of the river. We look at that and we logically see that this process is all interconnected, all part of one larger thing. The, if you look at Jew, Jewish uh, philosophers like the Rambam when they talk about this, they're really disturbed by idolatry. They view it as this sort of violation of an essential truth, of the unity of creation of the world. It's why it so deeply disturbs and upsets them. And it ties not only into physical truth, but moral truths as well. All of us are bound up in one another. Our fates are intertwined, Jewish, non-Jewish, everyone. All of us intersect in one form or another. Physically, emotionally, our destinies are bound up in one another. We see that the justice owed to an individual life as a result of that essential truth is no separate from the justice you are owed then a single drop of rain is separated from the greatest of, of oceans. These are differences of individuals, of individual objects, but not differences of, of the larger character of the concept of humanity. We are all intertwined. Everything is intertwined, fundamentally. And by the time of Moses, humanity had largely forgotten the truth. 
They worshiped material power and wealth. The Egyptians put their faith in their gleaming idols. They put their faith in their powerful armies. And we see with the plagues that physical forces are ultimately inferior to, to spiritual forces. That might does not make right. And because might does not make right, the Jewish people can't be defined by might. Not by might, not by power, by spirit alone, and so forth. We can't be like other peoples. We have to be distinct, an Am Kadosh, a holy people. So we're distinguished by our continued existence when the odds are stacked against us. We're distinguished by what that existence imparts upon our minds and souls, what that experience of oppression, what that experience of isolation teaches us about the human condition and about God. The continuous journey of learning and spiritual growth is the legacy that Moses and the Israelites left to us. Their physical journey from captivity into freedom into the acceptance of responsibility at Sinai. That's our journey too. It's our journey of Jewish learning. Six years ago when I began my journey to the rabbinate, I, I began it by moving to Israel and living on a on a religious collective farming community in northern Israel, a kibbutz. And when I was there, I, I noticed they didn't call the study of Jewish texts Talmud study, Jewish study. They just called it learning. And I believe part of why they did so was because learning Jewish texts, learning about Judaism, touches every other facet of our lives. It helps us to better understand and internalize that, that universal truth that we are all connected. All our lives are intertwined that all matter, all concepts, all things are wrapped up in this one essential unity of God. That is why it's learning. It's not Talmud study, it's just learning. And Moses in this moment, when we go back to the beginning of the Parsha, that's it for this week, when he's saying to, or the end of last week's Parsha and the beginning of this one, when he's saying to God, you know, things are not going well, you tasked me with doing this thing, of, of, of freeing these, of helping to free these people, and it is not going well. God does not respond in similar terms. He doesn't express woe also. Instead, God is ecstatic. God is over the moon with excitement for the Jewish people. And it makes me think back again to that when I, before I moved to Israel, I worked in food service for a while after college, saving up money to move to Israel. I bust tables. I worked as a bar back, lifting you know, heavy things and carrying them upstairs. And it hurt. <laughs> it was not physically pleasant. It was not the most meaningful or enjoyable work. But it was for a larger purpose. But sometimes it was hard to see and retain that. I, I remember I said to my father one day, you know, how hard all of this is. And my dad sort of shook his head at me. He shook his head because why was I not more excited? Why was Moshe not more excited in this moment? Both of us were looking at what was right in front of us instead of looking at what lay in front of us in, in the grander scheme of things. I needed a change in perspective just like Moses needed a change in perspective. Like all of us sometimes can use a change in perspective when we're too focused on short-term difficulty instead of broader, long-term, incredible opportunities. In the Parsha, that's what God is trying to help Moses to do to see the great values and truths that Moses is bringing into the world through Torah. The wonderful possibilities that this will create for the Israelites, for humanity at large. To take them back to a more pure, more correct understanding and relationship with God, with the moral values and truths that God instills in us, that we are all bound up in one another, that we all need one another, that none of us is ever truly alone. I think that is the message of the Parsha. To know that as Jews, we're part of something much greater than ourselves. That none of us are ever truly alone. That sometimes our situation as a people can feel quite precarious, but it's our situation as a people. That we are bound up together as a people, united by our shared heritage, by our shared learning, by our shared legacy. That we are part of this, this continual transition, transmission of values and truths to have the possibility to offer so much. And no, as we, learn from the, as, as we learn from the history of our people, it won't always be easy. 
As we learn from this week's parsha and, and, the, and last week's parsha, it won't always be easy. But we always have to be able to see that potential and step towards it. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, Josh, for teaching us about the parsha, and we'll hear more from you after Kiddush uh, st- when we study together. Let's continue with the Musaf service. Please rise for the Chatzy Kaddish. Amen. 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 We join together, page 185, the beginning of the Musaf Amidah. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu velohe avoteinu veimoteinu. Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov. Elohe Sara, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Lea. Ha'el ha'gadol ha'gibor ve'hanora. El elyon, gomel chasadim tovim. Vekoneh ha'kol, v'zocher chasei avot ve'imahot. Umevi goel livnei v'neham. Laman shemo v'yahava, melech ozer ufoked umoshia umagen. Baruch atadonai, magen avraham ufoked tzara. Ata gibor leolam adonai, mechaye metim atarav leoshia. Mashiv haruach umorid hagashem.
When you've completed your Amidah, you may be seated. Continue page 203, Kaddish Shalem. 
We turn to page 207. This coming week, we mark the yort sites of Molly Minkin, Sidney Shubin, Jerry Rindner, Shirley Polsky Berger, Harold Garten, Chaim Seigler, Nettie Brenner, Sam Scheib, Lawrence Reeves, Irving Weissman, Rita Aronoff, Minnie Biber, Stephen Jacobs, Claire Zamore, Morris Hirsch Citron, Diane Goldberg, Lee Roach, Simon Perlin, Edith Rosman, Dickie Shapiro. Martha Michelle, Larry Wayne, Edwin Goodman, Terry Katz, Isidore Bud Rubin, Lillian Hagen, Esther Volinskaya Bick, Edwin Goodman, Robert Leader, Freda Lapin, Evelyn Handler, Mordechai Leib Schwartz, Norma Abrams, Martin Schwartz, Sarah Albert, Joy Boxer, Stanley Schlesinger, Harry Friedman, Harry Goldstein. Norman Steinberger, Jean Shapiro, Irving Kurtz, Emmanuel Guller, Sam Warshower, Sylvia Block, Bessie Polakiewicz, Sarah Kirschbaum, Pearl Winkler Gillis, Irving Goldman, Rella Cohen Court, Julius Greenfield, and Murray Saltzman. We also extend condolences to congregants in the midst of Shloshim following the death of a loved one, to Cheryl Hollander on the passing of her mother, Anita Hollander, to Jim Duller on the passing of his mother, Catherine Shore, to Marcy Melman on the passing of her husband, Norman Melman, and to Kelly Wilson on the passing of her mother, Wanda Sinda. Page 207, Mourner's Kaddish. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shemei rabba v'yalma divera kirute v'yamlich malchute v'chayechon v'yomechon v'chaye d'chol beit Yisrael v'agala u'vizman kariv v'imru amen yehi shemei rabba mevorach le'olam u'lomeo maya Yit Barach, the Yishtabach, the Yit Paar, the Yit Romam, the Yit Nase, the Yit Hadar, the Yit Ale, the Yit Halal, Shemei, the Kutsha, Brihu, 
Le'ela minko berchata v'shirata, tush berchata v'nechemata, damiran bialma v'imru, amen. Yehesh lama rabba min shemaya, v'chayim aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru, amen. Ose shalom v'mromav, huya se shalom aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'al kol Yoshvei Tevel v'imru, amen. May be seated, representing the Temple Israel Board of Trustees, I call on Rachel Seymour. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat. Joseph Spill is very sorry he couldn't be here, and he does the announcements much better than me. So yes. you've got me today. Thank you, Rabbi Walt Kenner Lissick, for a beautiful service, and to Sean and Nico, as always, for live streaming. We offer a very warm welcome to Josh Bender, the, our rabbinical student who's here visiting. Um, there are a number of events this week, including the Jewish Federation um, is hosting their super event. It will actually be here at Temple Israel at 7 p.m. on Thursday. No, nope, that's not this week. That is February 1st at 7 p.m. <laughs> like <laughs> I think I mixed up the dates. Um, okay. This Thursday is the evening with the Israeli comedian and author Joel Chasnov, and that is going to feature Emmy Award winner Juju Chang, Rabbi David Wolpe. What am I doing? Let's try again. This Thursday night, we welcome Israeli comedian and author Joel Chasnov, the Israeli, uh, the author of, uh, of, of, Israel, of Israel 201, a great humorous book about Israel. Rachel, I think it's February 1st February is the Federation yeah. Super event, uh, the kick off the Federation campaign, no, which I will point out that, uh, that for the first time this year, Temple Israel has, is a beneficiary of the Federation campaign, which we are very much appreciative. And it was the first time that synagogues were able to apply for grants from the campaign that we all support. So it's important that we continue to support the work of Federation in our community. And we're happy that we can host the, the super event, which is the, the kickoff to the campaign. And Rachel, who will the super event be focusing, will be including? Super event will be including Emmy Award winner Juju Chang, right? Um, <laughs> Rabbi David Wolpe and Sheila Katz, who's the CEO of the National Council of Jewish Women. Um, the link is on the website. S the Still, which is formerly known as the Social Club, has their paid up membership lunch on Tuesday, uh, January 30th at 12 p.m. That's gonna feature Frank Dominguez, who is the program director for WDAV Radio and our own Cantor Ruschvarg singing a selection of Latino songs. Non-members can also join that program by registering on the website. And there is a very special raffle at that event for a beautiful holla cover that is on display in the Rose Room, if you want to take a look at that and apply for the raffle. Camp scholarship requests are due on January 31st for anyone planning to send their children to Jewish sleepaway camp this summer. And we look forward to everyone joining us for Kiddush. Thank you. So a few other things. Thank you, Rachel. Just to uh, acknowledge tomorrow morning, uh, Minion is regular at 9 o'clock, followed by uh, the wonderful breakfast. And tomorrow morning, Earl Norman will be sharing uh, after breakfast about his experience uh, serving on a Magen Davida Dome ambulance um, in, in Israel over the course of the war. So we look forward to hearing from, uh, from Earl. I also want to encourage anyone who is interested to register for the Introduction to Judaism course, which will be beginning at the end of January. Uh, while it's, op it's open to people who are considering conversion to Judaism, and to anyone who just wants to learn a little bit more and will be taught by uh, myself, together with Cantor Lissick and Rabbi Kornsgold, and uh, some guest teachers from the, from the community. Uh, today, we're going to conclude services and go into Kiddush uh, in the social hall. And as we do each week, we will hold uh, Mincha about half an hour after the end of services. And following Mincha, we'll have an opportunity to learn a shiur with, uh, with Josh. And Josh, what are we going to be, what will we be studying today? Um, are folks able to hear me if I talk loudly or say well there? Go up. So yeah, I'm very excited to learn with you all uh, after Mincha. Uh, what I will be teaching about will be sort of an expansion upon what I talked about in my Dvar. Uh, I have a, a lovely bit of something from a modern secular Jewish philosopher 
on the nature and the purpose of religion. And I'm going to weave that in with how Rabbi Samson Raphael Hirsch, who's one of the intellectual fathers of, of modern orthodoxy, how he makes sense of the Parsha and the trajectory of Jewish peoplehood. So it'll be more about the nature and purpose of religion and what that has to do with that revelation of Ani Hashem, I am God, which Moses experiences. Beautiful. Thank you, Josh. We conclude with En Kelohenu and Adon Olam, page 204. Could I get some assistance up here? You guys have waited so patiently. In Kelohenu, in Kadonenu, in Kimakenu, in Kimashienu, me Kelohenu, me Kadonenu, me Kimakenu, me Kimashienu, not in Kelohenu, not in Kadonenu, not in Kimakenu, not in Kimashienu, Paru Kelohenu, Paru Kadonenu, Paru Kimakenu. Page two eleven. <laughs> Shamru bene Israel et hashabat la'asot et hashabat le'dorot amerit olam. Shamru bene Israel et hashabat la'asot et hashabat le'dorot amerit olam. Pain you vain, Bene Israel, Oti Leolam, Oti Leolam, Vishamru, Bene Israel, Et Hashabat, La Asot, Et Hashabat, Ledor, Tamerit Olam, Kisheshet Yamim, Asa Aronai, Et Hashamayim, Viet Haaret, Vishamru, Bene Israel, et hashabat, la asot et hashabat, le dorot amerit olam. Vayom hashvi shabbat, vayinafa shabbat, vayinafa shabbat, vayinafa shvishamru. Bene Israel, et hashabat, la asot et hashabat, le dorot amerit olam. Al kein verach, anayom hashabat vayikadashehu, sabrim aranan v'rabanan v'rabotai. Baruch atad anay Eloheinu melech haolam borei peri hagafem l'chayim. I'm going to cover the kala. Baruch atad anay Eloheinu melech haolam hamotzi wakem in haaretz. Amen. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.